This is the income statement of Hasbro. Hasbro is one of the world's largest toy companies. They make toys such as Monopoly, Transformers, My Little Pony, and they also make toys for entertainment companies such as Disney and Pixar and Marvel action figures. So we're gonna look at their income statement and we're gonna learn how to read it and focus on what's important and what the various lines on the income statement mean. And the first thing that we need to realize is that while um, all income statements share similar characteristics, they're not all identical. Um, and GAAP lays out certain guidelines, but GAAP is not prescriptive to what should or should not be on a uh, financial statement or, or how things are labeled. Um, and we're gonna see that uh, companies have a certain amount of latitude in how they present and label their financial statements. So we need to be comfortable with the variations and not let the differences among financial statements confuse us. Um, and we can do that by understanding what's the same across all financial statements. So I'm gonna show you uh, an example and we'll walk through the Hasbro income statement here. Um, and the first thing that we need to realize is that all income statements have uh, two basic sections. Um, and they have one calculation. So the first section is revenue, um, the second section is expenses, and uh, the third uh, is profit, or that's the calculation. So revenue minus expenses is equal to profit. And this is what we refer to um, as the profit equation. So in this situation, uh, we can see that Hasbro's income statement begins with revenue, and in the case of 2018, the revenue was $4.5 billion. Uh, and they list some detail of their costs, uh, and they begin um, with the cost of sales and then royalties and product development and so on. And if you add up all those expenses, uh, they come to uh, 4.28 billion. Uh, and if you take 4.5 minus 4.28, you're left with a profit of $220 million. So very simply, the profit equation for Hasbro is revenue minus expenses is equal to profit. Four and a half billion minus 2.28 billion is $220 million. And this is the same on all income statements. You'll find the profit equation like this. Now let's take a closer look uh, at the income statement. The first thing that we need to notice is that it's not actually necessarily labeled as an income statement. Um, you can see here, that the label that Hasbro has chosen to use is called the Consolidated Statement of Operations. So oftentimes you'll see it labeled as a statement of operations. Other companies could call it um, the statement of income or the statement of earnings or income statement or the statement of profit and loss um, or sometimes just P&L. And they all mean the same thing. And we shouldn't let um, the variances and the different labels distract us from noticing that they all begin with revenue. They all have a set of expenses that are detailed and they uh, all ex uh, subtract those expenses from revenue to, to arrive at profit. So the next thing we need to notice is the period of time that we're looking at. Um, look at the date. Uh, the income statement is for a period of time, and this period of time in uh, the case of Hasbro here is set for the fiscal year ended in December, and the column is labeled uh, 2018. Um, and it could be for any period. Uh, it could be for a month or a quarter or a year, um, and it'll be labeled at the top of the income statement. Um, and the next thing we need to notice is the units uh, that we're in. The units here, it says, are in thousands of dollars. Uh, and so when we read the income statement here for Hasbro, we have to imagine three additional zeros at the end because it's in thousands. So this is uh, $4.5 billion because um, uh, of the extra three uh, digits in terms of their revenues. And that uh, similarly, in terms of their net earnings, we understand that to be $220 million because this is in thousands. Okay, now let's look at revenue. So revenue is the first line on the P&L, and it might be labeled just as uh, net revenue, as it is here. Um, Sometimes it's not plural. It could be just called revenue without an S at the end. Uh, sometimes it could be called sales or net sales, uh, and it may not have the word net. Uh, so uh, we're not going to get confused about that. The top line of the income statement is the revenue, um, and, uh, and it's important to understand that uh, all the different labels that a company can use for revenues uh, mean the same thing, and there's no rules or regulation that require companies to label it one way or another. It's also important to understand 
that revenue is not cash. So what we're talking about here is not the amount of cash that Hasbro uh, took in during the year of 2018, but it's the value of the products that they provided to customers uh, or the services that they provided to customers in this period of time. So first, we can ask the question, is this company growing? And uh, what it, how is their rate of growth changing over time? And to do that, we would look at a couple more years of the income statement. Uh, and here we can see that Hasbro had $4.5 billion of revenue in 2018, but $5.2 billion in the prior year, 2017. And they had $5 billion two years prior in 2016. So we can see that Hasbro is not growing. Uh, it is declining. And while it grew from 2016 to 2017, the, in 2018, it gave up all of those gains and more. Uh, now, the income statement doesn't tell us why this happened, but just that it did. Uh, and to find out why, we could ask the management of Hasbro or read the MD&A uh, in the 10K filing. That's the management discussion and analysis uh, that's included in the 10K. So, and if we do this, uh, what we would find is that Hasbro explains that their growth in 2017 was the result of winning the contract to make the Disney Princess and Marvel toys, and that they benefited from a strong uh, slate of movie releases, and that uh, stoked demand for, uh, for their toys. Um, and uh, in 2018, the story changed um, as their largest customer, Toys R Us, declared bankruptcy. Um, and so we see a decline in their top line sales. So despite this decline, they still made uh, $4.5 billion in revenue, which is a lot of money. Now, uh, the rest of the income statement shows how they turned that $4.5 billion into profit. So let's take a look. So the cost of goods sold. Now this could also be labeled as cost of revenue or cost of sales or cost of products sold or cost of goods. And they all mean the same thing. Um, this represents what it costs Hasbro to make or buy the product or service that they are selling. Uh, in Hasbro's case, the cost of sales is the cost of making the toys that they sell to retailers such as Walmart, Target, and Amazon. Um, now, this is often the largest single expense for many companies, and in Hasbro's case, it cost them $1.85 billion to make the toys that they sold for $4.5 billion. So now we've just looked at two lines on the PL, but we can already ask two additional uh, questions. Uh, about this company. First, we can ask how efficient is Hasbro at producing products for sale? Uh, and second, um, is their production getting more or less efficient over time? And to do that, we want to look at gross profit. Now, uh, gross profit is not, usually, is it, it's not explicitly stated on Hasbro's income statement, and in other income statements uh, it could be, uh, but all the information to get to gross profit is already there. Um, so gross profit is revenue minus cost of goods sold. So we just take the first line, subtract the second line, and we arrive at gross profit. Um, in this case, uh, the gross profit for Hasbro is $4.5 billion minus $1.85 billion of cost of sales, um, and we can calculate that the gross profit is $2.7 billion. Now, gross profit is often expressed as a percentage of revenue. And to do that, uh, uh, we would just divide the result of uh, net revenues minus cost of sales, divide it all through by net revenues. So for Hasbro, we've already arrived at the gross profit of $2.7 billion, and we divide that by the net revenues of $4.5 billion, and we can uh, calculate that Hasbro's gross margin is 59.6%. Now, we're asking the question, is Hasbro efficient at producing product for sale? We know the gross margin is 59.6%, and this means that it costs Hasbro about 40 cents of every dollar uh, to make the products that they sell to Walmart. And they have the, the rest, or the 59.6 cents of every dollar, to pay all, all the rest of their expenses that you see on the p and um, and hopefully they have some profit left over at the end. Now, to evaluate uh, if 59.6 is good or bad, we need to compare Hasbro to similar companies who make the same type of products. And here I've listed out um, Lego, Spin Master, and Mattel uh, alongside Hasbro to show uh, what their gross margins are in the same year. 
So we can see that, uh, for example, Lego is, has a gross margin of 71.4%. Uh, Hasbro is ranked second in terms of gross margin in this set of companies at 59.6%. Spin Master is at 49 and Mattel is at 39 And so at almost 60%, Hasbro's gross margin is less than Legos, but more than both Spin Masters and Mattel's. So comparing their uh, Hasbro's metrics to peer companies in the same industry is sometimes called industry analysis. We could also call this peer analysis or a comparative analysis. And when we take a look at how Hasbro's margins have been trending, we just would do the same calculation in the same way uh, for the uh, prior years, and we can see that Hasbro's margin in 2016 was 62%. It dropped one percentage point to 61% in 17, and then fell below 60% in 2018. So when we use both of these measures together, uh, we can see uh, that uh, while Hasbro's gross margin is still better than some of its peers, um, it's worsening over time. And in addition, uh, we also know that their sales are declining. So worsening gross margins and declining sales could be a cause of concern for us. And it would prompt us to want to ask management about this situation um, and what their plans are to turn it around. So now look, we're only two lines into this income statement and we've already learned a significant amount about the financial condition of one of the largest companies in the country. So let's keep going in our analysis. We'll look now at operating expenses. Um, we can see as we look down the P&L that Hasbro has included detail for several expenses, royalties, product development, advertising, and so on. And each company will identify different expense categories that are important to their business. Some companies will give a lot of detail here and others uh, won't. Others will group everything as um, SG&A or selling general and administrative expenses. Um, in Hasbro's case, they've chosen to show that royalties were uh, $350 million in 2018. Uh, and that's what they pay to Disney and Marvel for the rights to make toys based on characters in their films. Product development was $246 million in 2018, and this is the cost of designing and developing the toys that they sell. Advertising was $440 million in 2018, and this is the cost of TV commercials and online digital ads that promote Hasbro's toys to parents and kids. An amortization of intangibles uh, and program production cost amortization are the next two lines. They are uh, 28 million and 43 million dollars respectively. Uh, and these represent the gradual writing off of the cost of an asset over time. It's important to understand that these are not cash costs going out. So for example, Hasbro may have paid for the production of a movie at some point in the past, and it's recognizing a part of that cost in 2018 as the movie is continuing to drive toy sales in 2018. And uh, the last item here in operating expenses is selling distribution and administrative costs. Uh, and those were 1.287 billion in 2018. Uh, and these are the rest of Hasbro's expenses for the sales and corporate functions and office overheads. And that brings us to the next set of fundamental questions that we can ask about this company. How efficiently is Hasbro operating this business? And is company management getting more or less efficient at running this business over time? To answer this, we need to look at operating profit. So some companies call this income from operations uh, or uh, operating earnings or operating income. Uh, you'll see it labeled differently on different income statements, but they all mean the same thing. Um, if operating profit is not on the income statement, uh, we don't need to worry about that either because it's really simple to calculate uh, and all the information that we need will be there. So, and here's the way we would calculate it. Operating profit is revenue minus cost of goods sold and minus operating expenses or uh, gross profit minus operating expenses. So in Hasbro's case, we know that the gross profit was 2.73 billion and then we'll subtract all the rest of these expenses of 2.4 billion to arrive at the operating profit of 331 million. Now, of course, Hasbro's done the calculation for us uh, and that's on their P&L, so we don't need to calculate it offline. So, and similar to gross margin, we can express operating margin as a percent of revenue um, 
by uh, dividing operating profit by net revenue. So in this case, we would divide $331 million of operating profit by $4.5 billion of net revenue to arrive at an operating margin of 7.2%. So now the question we would have is, so well, 7% uh, good or bad? Uh, we know that Hasbro is, um, uh, uh, we want to know if Hasbro is managing their business efficiently, uh, and we know it's 7.2% is their operating margin. So this means that after accounting for the cost of making the product and all of their operating expenses, they have 7.2 cents left of every dollar that they sell. So just like we did with gross margin, we want to compare this to other companies in the industry. And we also want to compare uh, Hasbro's operating margin to prior years to see how it's trending over time. So here are the questions. How, how efficiently are they operating their business? Well, when we compare to other companies in the same industry who make the same product and sell to the same customers, uh, you know, Lego has a 30% operating margin. Spin Master is almost 12. Hasbro is third on this list at 7.2, but at least they're still positive, while Mattel has a negative operating margin of minus 5%. So they're toward the bottom of the industry, uh, and uh, one would, it would suggest that they uh, could have some areas to improve, and we would want to understand that and look into this a little more deeply. Then we can look at Hasbro's operating margin over time, and we'll see that in 2016, Operating margin was 17, uh, sorry, 15.7%, uh, uh, and it was, it was fairly stable the following year at 15.6%, but something happened in 2018, um, and it fell to only 7.2%. So we have now something that we would definitely want to understand better. Why is our operating margin um, uh, significantly declining in 2018? Okay. So we keep working down our way down the profit and loss statement for Hasbro. Um, and the next section we uh, see is called non-operating expense. And we see um, interest expense and other income. So let's take a look at these. Um, interest expense in 2018 was $90 million. Um, and this represents the interest on the loans that the company is using to fund their assets. Interest income here is a negative $22 million. Uh, and this is a negative expense, so it's actually a positive. Uh, you, so if you think about it that way, you're going to subtract a negative to add back a positive. Uh, so don't let that confuse you. But it represents the interest the company earned on its cash deposits throughout the year, um, and it offsets other non-operating expenses, um, such as interest. And then they have this uh, small item here called other income and expenses. Uh, and other income was a negative $7.8 million. Uh, this is usually not material for most companies. Uh, if you know what it is, or if you want to know what it is, you can look inside the notes to the financial statements. They're usually going to have a good description. Um, in Hasbro's case, uh, it's income that they earned on an investment in another company. So it's separated out from the rest of the income statement since it doesn't relate to Hasbro's primary business of selling toys. So once we subtract these from operating profit, we arrive at the income on which Hasbro pays tax. Uh, and this is sometimes called profit before tax or uh, earnings before tax or income before tax. And occasionally you'll see it labeled as taxable income. Uh, but here Hasbro calls it earnings before income taxes um, and that is $270 million. Now the next thing we can look at is taxes. Uh, so income taxes uh, in 2018 were $49.9 million. And if we divide that tax expense by the profit before tax, uh, we can arrive at the tax rate, the effective tax rate for uh, Hasbro. So we take 49.9 divided by the line right above it, uh, which is their uh, earnings before tax. And we can see that in 2018, uh, Hasbro's tax rate was 18.5%. And now uh, we get to the proverbial bottom line of the company and we can ask uh, two more fundamental questions about Hasbro. One, is this company profitable? Um, and two, is the company becoming more or less profitable over time? So uh, net earnings or net income, uh, it's labeled net earnings on the P&L, uh, is profit before tax minus tax. Uh, and so in this case it would be the $270 million minus the almost $50 million in income taxes to leave Hasbro with a net earnings 
of $220 million. And uh, just like we did with operating profit and gross profit, uh, we can also take net earnings and divide that through by revenues and arrive at their net margin. So if we do that here, $220 million divided by $4.5 billion of net revenue uh, would leave us uh, uh, with a net margin of 4.8%. Which So this means that after all their expenses, operating expenses and non-operating expenses, Hasbro has 4.8 cents of net profit for every dollar of sales. And just like we did with gross margin and operating margin, uh, to evaluate whether 4.8% is any good, uh, we need to use comparative and horizontal analysis. When we compare 4.8% uh, of net margin with uh, peer companies, we see that um, it is uh, far less than Lego, uh, about half of what Spin Master achieves, but at least it's still positive. Uh, while Mattel is losing money uh, at a minus 11% net margin. And uh, as we look at how this has trended over time, uh, we can see that uh, it's getting worse each year. 2016, um, it was quite, uh, quite good relative to the peer set at uh, 10%. Uh, it dropped to 76 in 17, and it's now uh, about half that at 4.8%. So in addition to declining sales and worsening gross margins and worsening operating margins, uh, they also have a worsening profitability and they are toward the bottom end of their peer set. So uh, this would heighten our concern as analysts. Uh, we would wanna see some forthright comments from management about how they're addressing this situation and what their detailed plans are to turn this around. So there we have it. In a a uh, few minutes, we have an initial analysis of the income statement of one of the largest companies in the world. And we've seen that while they are selling four and a half billion dollars of toys, this company is not growing and it is worsening in every profitability measure that we looked at. And it's also lagging its industry peers. So uh, to draw these conclusions as a review, we calculated our profitability ratios and we conducted industry and horizontal analysis. And we ask the questions that are listed here. Is the company growing? Is the growth rate changing? How efficient is the company? Is the production getting more or less efficient? And how efficiently is the business operating? And is the man are the managers of this business getting more or less efficient at operating it? Uh, and is the company ultimately profitable? And how is that changing over time?